K-H-A-F-R-E comma I-N-C executive director comma executive director. That's an apostrophe, not a comma. That you got up there now. Um, let's see. I think it, um, yeah, you probably shut off. Uh -huh. Yes. And then this is entrepreneur, writer, and an educator. Mm -hmm. um, entrepreneur, educator, writer. Um, education led into my writing, but that's okay. It's either way, I can flip it either direction. Maybe education first, and then writing, and then entrepreneur. Inverse order, educator, writer, entrepreneur, sade, turnip seed. Candidate for mayoral, yeah, is that right? We don't want to talk about that. I'm just talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't want to bring that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. candidate for mayoral. 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 I don't, mayoral. I'm, not gonna, mayoral. I'm not going to even say it because it's I'm bound to screw it up, so I'm going to skip that one. Uh, Mayor Yorl.
Welcome to the Delta Renaissance Show. I'm your guest host, Curtis L. Smith, and today I have a special guest, Sade Turnipseed, <laughs> executive producer of Cafre Inc. Mm -hmm. and co-owner of The House mm -hmm. in Indianola, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Sade. Thank you. Today I'd like you to give us some information about yourself. Now I know that you host this show and you've had many wonderful guests, mm -hmm. but today I have the privilege of <laughs> interviewing you. So Sade, tell us something about yourself. I'm so honored to be here as your guest, Curtis. All right. <laughs> it is, it's truly an honor and I'm glad um, to be here and to um, do this show. I, I would love to tell you all about me, but from the beginning, I can say that I was born and raised in San Francisco, California, the greatest city on the planet Earth. And also the coldest. And, and sometimes, most, yes. well, in fact, most times yes. it's the <laughs> coldest. Uh, but you learn to put on sweaters no matter where you go, right. no matter what season it is. But it's, it's a wonderful place to be from and to live in, and I, I love my home, yeah. Right. So. But um, growing up in San Francisco uh, was a very unique experience, and I treasure it. And so there is where I got all of my footing for you know, who I am today as an educator, entrepreneur, and writer, and all these various things. So, so who are some of your influences in uh, San Francisco? In San Francisco, it would have to primarily be my parents, of course, okay. and that little village that I grew up in. Uh, I grew up in a little village that I like to call village at Hunters Point, Petrero Hill, and Bernal Heights. And, and then once I was grown and on my own, moved to Diamond Heights, and then eventually on into the East Bay, Oakland, Berkeley area. Okay. So, mm -hmm. All right. So your transformation from San Francisco into Berkeley, the East Bay, Oakland, California, was that more related to your education experience or was there something going on that brought you over into the other side of the bay? I think the cheaper rent. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> but I, you know, I was one of those folks who went to school every single place that I lived, in every city that I've ever lived in. I, I enrolled in the university or the, the community college. So I first um, approached my higher education uh, in San Francisco at San Francisco Community College. Went there for a few years and then uh, transitioned to the East Bay and uh, went to Laney College, Alameda College, Merritt College, and then ended up going back to San Francisco State and graduating there. And then okay. between there and uh, both sides of the Bay, I ended up going to UC Berkeley and then uh, graduated from Golden Gate University in San okay. Francisco. For the people in the Delta that may not be familiar with the Bay, your yes. reference to the Bay, that would be the Bay Bridge over the Pacific Ocean going from San Francisco over into the east side. Yes, yes, uh, that is a very colloquial term. And, and yeah, you kind of have to be from the Bay Area to understand the abbreviated term, but it is, there's a Bay, and we call it the Bay, but it's the San Francisco um, Bay. And there's a bridge, that's the Bay Bridge there, that, that connects the two with um, Treasure Island in the middle. Treasure Island, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, that's home sweet home. Yeah. Okay, and that's about it. The toll for that bridge is approximately, what, $5? You know what, I think it's going up because they just built a brand new bridge. I haven't seen that brand new bridge okay. yet, but I understand it's quite gorgeous, and it's probably going to be $10 by the time I get back home. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So what was your primary area of study out there? My primary focus um, at Berkeley was marketing and advertising. Uh, communications was my field of expertise. And so I, I studied there for a couple of semesters. I produced um, some shows like Sweet Honey in the Rock and Maya Angelou. We called it Sweet Sunday at Zellerbach. It was a really historic event. I'm very, very proud of that event. It kind of whet my appetite into the arts and production of the arts. Um, 
And so it was a sold out performance. It was phenomenal. Uh, and, and truly, uh, even Maya, Dr. Maya Angelou and Sweet Honey in the Rock, they still remember that particular uh, performance as one of their most outstanding performances. And, and I will have to agree, it was phenomenal. And um, so for it to be one of my creations, I'm quite yes. proud of that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All so, right. you know, Berkeley was one, but um, San Francisco State, I think, is, is probably even more uh, relevant to where I have gone in my career because I got the degree there. Um, in broadcast communication arts and this is where I learned television production and that was my degree it was radio and television broadcasting okay. and um, then left there and went to Golden Gate University and got a master's in telecommunications and then a master's in business administration from Golden Gate University as well so now I'm here working on a PhD or just about done with it uh, from Middle mm -hmm. Tennessee State University okay that sounds like a lot of semester hours. It's a, it's a lot of work, <laughs> but it seems like this last sec, this last phase, um, this PhD, it, it ties it all together. It's public history, so it allows me to engage the arts, um, all of the historical research, and um, you know, just all of the things that I've worked on thus far. It makes sense, and 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 history truly does inform the arts in so many ways on so many levels and so I'm just very honored to be to have been selected to participate in the PhD program at Middle Tennessee. Okay great so your education experience culminated from the community college system in California mm -hmm. you went to the West Coast Ivy League California Berkeley the Golden Bears <laughs> to San Francisco State Mm -hmm. So that's that's a tremendous educational experience. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but you know, I like to think of it as a, a place, a, it's a haven, it's a safe haven uh, for, you know, young women, um, for young men. It's, it's a place to go to stay out of trouble. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll be right back with Sade Turnipseed. Welcome back to Delta Renaissance. I'm here with the fantastic Sade Turnipseed. <laughs> Sade, we talked about your educational experience. I want to know how your educational experience influenced your writing. Mm. I know that you're a big writer, mm -hmm. and I know that that's one of the things that you really like to relate in your experiences here in the Delta. So tell mm -hmm. us something about that. Yeah, I've, I've developed a passion for writing, I think, as a result of me teaching. Uh, I was an English teacher and 
um, it started perhaps in Los Angeles where I was teaching the high school students there and also at Cal State Northridge. But in the high school, um, there was a particular concern that I had and it was the issue that these young kids seem to be very angry. <laughs> they just were. And so, you know, I needed them to express themselves and just 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 pour it out on paper. What what's going on? You know, what's going on in your life that you need to release and, and just vent and, and um, you know, I think that somehow there's a lot of therapy that's involved in that if you just put it out there, you know. Sometimes you can't say it the way that you really want to. And, but as an English teacher talking to her students, um, it was an opportunity, you know, to really understand these, these young people a little better and to also, for me to understand the times and the place that I was living in. And it was a situation where the children at, at this particular high school um, at that time, over 10 years ago now, a full third of them were children who lived either in group home or in a foster care situation. That's where the anger and the frustration was coming from. They felt that all of the adults in their world were paid to be there, including me, their teacher. And I was horrified when I found out those statistics. And so I truly, you know, felt so, so very bad about society and about, you know, where we were and how we were treating our children or, you know, putting them through things that was just simply unfair. And so I challenged the young people to please write instruction for adults. Um, could you help us to love you better? Could you help us and, and show us the way, you know, back to good parenting and being that, um, those, those, those folks who, though we say, you know, the future is for the young and for, um, the, you know, the, the, the young are the ones who are going to take over the future and all this other thing, but how are we preparing them for that? Right. And okay. so to be better stewards of their community, of their world, teach us how to love you better. Right. You know, and, and okay. so what are the tools that you would give us to get to that place where you feel as though we as adults are doing our job. Right. And so these, these young people, they were brutally honest. I mean, brutally honest. But it all came down to one very critical point that they were all trying to make. Can you imagine what that, that, that need was, what they wanted from us more than anything else? Possibly love. Love. But it was also, how do you give love? It's through time, right. right? And so it's just time that they wanted. They didn't want the gifts. They didn't want the this, the that, and the third. They wanted your attention, and they wanted your time. And so that was the most precious thing uh, that they revealed in their writings, and it was a book and an anthology that we put together that's called Saving Ourselves. Uh, by writers of the 21st century, a surrogate embrace. It was a pretty long title, but it just ended up being, they're going to save themselves, you know? Okay. And um, since it seems that we're not doing such a good job at it, they just decided through their own writings that they want to save themselves. Okay. And so it was through that that I then came to Mississippi and, and decided oh. to come here and sit down and edit this Right. Monster. So that's my next question. <laughs> Book, yeah. I, I see that you have a breadth of experience here. And so there's lots of wisdom and knowledge. And culturally, you've gone from Northern California to Southern California. How does this prepare you for the culture of the Mississippi Delta and the ideas and the things that you're trying to help students with, particularly in your writing? To be very honest, I don't think anything prepares you for the Mississippi Delta. You just have to get here and experience it for yourself. And just with the knowing that this is the epicenter 
of America's culture. This is the epicenter of America's root pain, I think. Uh, this is where blues was born. So what about this place evoked blues? So if you could only imagine that, it, it just, it, it's a very important place for me to be because it is so rich and it's so full of life and spirit of, of, of the ancestors and just, you know, the memory and the history of, of all of it. You know, it, it just kind of gets concentrated right here. So as a writer, I have not ever been in any environment that is so stimulating as, as is the Mississippi Delta. My people, when I first got here, um, I was in the hills up in Choctaw County in Ackerman. And even there, it's two hours away, but it's, it's very distinct from the Delta. And so when I got here to the Delta, it's, again, very different from any place else that I have ever lived in my entire life. But I fell in love with this place. And I guess it is because it's, it's just so charged and so fueled with the kind of thing that an artist is, it gets, gets inspired by. I mean, this is, the, this is the stuff, you know, that informs your art. And so I've been very, very productive and, um, again, highly charged creatively. So writing books, I think, since being here, uh, we've been able to edit over 20 books, and I've written three myself, and, and now pursuing this PhD, and it's all about um, exploring the economic and the cultural implications of cotton and how it has impacted uh, world cultures. So that is, is primary research. It's, it's, it's a lot of secondary research study in there and just documenting and pulling a lot of the stories that have never been told. And a lot of folks are just holding on to these narratives that uh, I'm exploring in, in my work now. Okay, great information. So we're going to pause for the cause, mm -hmm. and we'll be back with the Delta Renaissance and Sade Turnipseed. <laughs> How much time we got left? Oh, perfect. Good stuff. You're doing good. Okay. All right. I remember to look into the camera. Mm -hmm. All right. I was really, I was hoping you didn't jump into the Delta because I was, I was trying to wave, uh, save that <laughs> one. But when you got there, I said, okay. <laughs> Well, so that. now we can go from your hair and what are some of the projects you're working on and, you know, the entrepreneurial side of it. But I definitely want to talk about the Cotton Picker Monument. You want to talk about oh, it? Oh, yeah. Okay, Cotton Picker Monument. Mm -hmm. Cotton Picker Monument. Is it okay? Yeah, that whole project is very, very important. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Welcome back to Delta Renaissance. And I'm Curtis Smith, your guest host, and I'm here with Sade Turnipseed. Uh, today we found out quite a bit about you. Yeah. Some of the things that we've probably been longing to know about you, and now you're informing us. Tell us more about some of your projects, some of the things that you're working on, and some of this, the improvement efforts that you're targeting to the Mississippi Delta and Sunflower County. Oh, okay. Well, um, since coming here to the Delta. I've been here almost uh, real close to 10 years. Sorry, you been real close to 10 years now. And I've been involved with several different kinds of work. Um, I was initially working with MACE, uh, the Mississippi Action for Community Education, and helping produce the 30th Annual Blues Festival and was recruited 
by the B.B. King Museum as their inaugural director of education and community outreach and then from there got recruited to do this Ph.D. and in the in betwixt in between I opened up my own business which is the House of Cafre along with uh, my partner uh, Robert Terrell and it's in downtown Indianola and it's the only African art gallery and cultural center in the entire Delta and so we're very proud of that to be able to have a cultural center right. here that's dedicated to the history and culture of the Mississippi Delta but of, of African Americans here in the Mississippi Delta so we spent a lot of time exploring cotton right and and the cultural dynamics of cotton and what I've discovered is a whole lot of folks are still mad at cotton <laughs> Why are they so mad at cotton, Curtis? I don't know. <laughs> I personally like cotton. Not necessarily cotton picking. I know. Cotton, shopping, cotton wears cotton very was well, very don't nice. it? So, um, in that work, it, it has just opened up a whole, boy, plethora of, uh, again, ideas and projects and, and great interests of, for me. And uh, one of the, the major works that have come from there. And, and the, the work that we have that we have ongoing at the house and anyone who hasn't come they need to come and see the shotgun house stage that we have and it's all um, surrounded by cotton 